Welcome back to another out of spec motoring road trip. In this episode, we are leaving the most northern city in North Dakota, heading across Montana and ending up in Glacier National Park. Make sure to grab some popcorn because this is going to be a long and adventurous episode with our Tesla Model 3 performance and, of course, all of the data. Welcome to Minot, North Dakota. This is Alyssa's brother, Garrett, and uh, we are charging at the first and only public DC fast charger in all of North Dakota. It just opened up a week ago. Garrett lives here in Minot. Garrett's in the Air Force. He gets to fly B-52s and really cool stuff. And uh, this is a Chatamo uh, CCS unit, 50, actually 75 kilowatt, 50 on Chatamo, of course and uh, really cool to see this infrastructure. It made this trip so much easier, but we are on our way over here to the middle of this field because we have a problem. As you can see, Alyssa has the dogs and Blue's ball, his tennis ball, fell down this deep hole and he just can't find it. He's pretty upset about it. <laughs> so we're gonna let him get to that while it charges up our car it needs about an hour on the charger to give us enough juice to get back to the supercharger network um, we might go by the base today we might go see some stuff in town we'll see but one thing can be said for sure we are going to be heading west and ending this episode in glacier national park where we have been camping and will continue camping out of our Model 3 across the entire country in the middle of nowhere. So stay tuned for this episode. We finished charging up on that Chatamo station, which again is the first and only public DC fast charger in the state of North Dakota at the time of recording. We went to Minot Air Force Base where Garrett is a navigator in the Air Force for the B-52s. So let's figure out where we are going to head. We actually charged up to 96% on the Chatamo station, but ended up coming back to our hotel and spending the night. So it's actually the next morning. So we want to go to Glacier National Park and we're going to find places to camp there, hopefully, but uh, we cannot go through Canada car. <laughs> Would be nice because those are all version three superchargers. But what we're gonna do is go back down to Bismarck. This is interesting. It says Jamestown Zero available. Hmm. Anyway, we'll go to Bismarck, Dickinson, Glendive, and around here. All 250 kilowatt chargers. Part of this new stretch of chargers that we'll be featuring. So our next stop will be Bismarck, North Dakota. It's gonna be a pretty cool, desolate drive on the way down. I don't expect to see many cars at all. 107 miles, we'll arrive 37%. Maybe we'll just rip down. After this, I think Alyssa's gonna drive. She's having the dogs play in the dog park over here at our hotel, one of the reasons why we chose it. They had wall outlets and a cool dog park. Um, and I only needed to charge the car to 80% last night. No reason to charge it very high if we're not going to use it. So Alyssa will drive after Dickinson so I can edit videos for you guys to watch.
and we are now at the Bismarck Supercharger. They're doing a little bit of work, I think, on landscaping, which is fine because uh, our charger's open. We're at 9%. We burned so much juice getting here, 410 watt hour per mile, just because we had that massive headwind, headwind close to Minot. But let's get this thing plugged in. We have to shoot a couple videos, of course, for inside EVs. You can see the BMS is a little confused going 9, 10, 9%. And uh, we'll get this thing charging up. Let's see if we can hit 250 kilowatt. And we are ramping up. Just saw 247 kilowatt. That's pretty good speeds either way. Cannot complain about 246, seven. Can we see 250 though? The dogs are drinking a little water. 248, come on, come on. No, going back down. That's all right. Still, that's pretty much maxing this thing out. Not bad at all. So the work that they're doing here is just putting in a sprinkler line to keep the grass looking nice around the charger. Looks pretty good. Still have plenty of spots open to charge and honestly, not, you're not going to fill this thing up in the middle of North Dakota. Like I said, we're probably going to be the only one charging here today. So that's totally fine. We have a ton of bugs all over the car. Looking real nasty, but that's the only way to road trip. Our next stop is going to be Dickinson, North Dakota. This one has been sort of the last version three to come online here. And actually, according to PlugShare, it's still not active, but it is according to the car. And uh, Tesla obviously uses real-time charger status. So four of eight available shows me that maybe one cabinet's down, but one cabinet is up. So we might plug in, it won't give power, but we'll just try another stall and we should be good. This is very common for version three installs when they're new, same thing in this Montana supercharger. So off to Dickinson, it says a 20% arrival. I actually think we're gonna charge up, you know, just for a couple more minutes because there's a really big headwind that we're gonna be battling heading west. And um, you know what, we are not in a huge rush. Alyssa, you're gonna take on this stretch if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, and I'm going to edit the video of part two for these guys to watch. Yeah. And you're happy about that, buddy? Very happy. <laughs> Alyssa has the Jimmy Johns. Oh, yeah. Freaky fast. It actually was pretty fast. Use the restrooms. We're going to unplug. She's going to drive, and we're off to the next supercharger. <laughs> what is he doing up front? We exit the highway for a tour down the Enchanted Highway. This is a collection of the world's largest scrap metal sculptures. And they all sit along a 32 mile stretch of two lane highway in North Dakota. We were able to stop in and see most of the sculptures along the road. They really are incredible. And it's a great thing to bring traffic off of the highway and into small towns. This one is a grasshopper hopping through grass, I think. We are with Gary, the man who created all of the stuff you have seen so far along the Enchanted Highway. Why did you do this? <laughs> well, I guess I started it with the idea of trying to help keep our small town alive. Oh, that's so and, cool. Uh, I figured, how do you bring people from interstate to here and 
Uh, everybody wants a everybody wants a big factory. Well, a big factory isn't going to come in for a town of a hundred people. <laughs> right. But then I finally figured out what what the ranchers and farmers are good at in the whole Midwest. They're good at welding. So you use what they're good at to our advantage. But I thought, well, no one's going to stop the normal sculpture, but they might stop for the world's love. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Gary, you do, have done an awesome job here. All of Thank this you. has been fantastic. Thank it's so you. cool to meet you. Thank you. And uh, hopefully you'll see some other people with electric cars traveling through to stop I at your so sculptures. Too. I hope so more you. <laughs> yeah, it was very nice meeting Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. So it was really cool to meet Gary, who has done all these sculptures. How awesome was it to run into him? It takes him six years to make one. Uh, I forget how many there are, but I think around 10. And to paint them, sorry for all the wind, I can't do anything about it. For, to paint them, he uses this old US Air Force fire truck. How cool is that? This thing is awesome. I will absolutely own a collection of odd fire trucks one day. I just think they're the coolest things. Anyway, we won't get to Dickinson with much battery charge now. We have to turn around and head back, especially after blasting around on some great dirt roads. Used a little more energy than we should have. We're off to Dickinson Supercharger. Here we go. have arrived in Dickinson at 2% perfectly planned. We went down the Enchanted Highway just enough. Check this out. They have a trash can and a windshield washer. We'll definitely use that. Let's get plugged in and going. You can see all of cabinet one is just blocked off for some reason. It must not be working. But all four stalls on cabinet two, you can see 2A starts A, B, C, and D. That's where we're rocking and rolling. And we have ramped up to a maxed out 250 kilowatt. Oh yeah, pretty sweet. So our next supercharger stops only 90 miles, I think, something like this, not very far at all, 96 miles. But I'm pretty sure we wanna stop in the uh, Theodore Roosevelt National Park and see if we can see some bison and also check out this cute little town of Medora Which is like an old western town. I don't know. I think it's a little cheesy, but you know We'll we'll show you guys lots of fun little stops along the way here in North Dakota. We're in no rush So what we're gonna do is probably charge up way more than we need to uh, Just to get to Glendive, Montana, I think is what this one is um, Because who knows how long we're gonna spend in the park and Medora and we need to keep the AC on. So we'll charge it up to, I don't know, 90% or so. We're gonna charge here for about 25 minutes to get it up to 90%. So I'm going to take our key, which has a Cybertruck keychain on it, open up the box and grab one of the Ebonex sunshades that are made for the Model 3. So we have all of our stuff in here, as you can tell, for camping, which we're gonna be using tonight. Might be a windy camping spot. So let's get the windshield cover on and run into some of these stores while we wait. We have these heat shields all over the car now. The only ones we're not doing are the front windows, but it's nice and dark back there for you guys. Someone can look in and they'll see the dog mode when we close the screen. Uh, let me demonstrate. Dog mode, owner will be back soon. We have the, the temperature set to the lowest possible of 66 degrees and they should stay nice and cool in there. We can monitor it from our phone. Let's go run into a store. We have about 20 minutes to kill. We have just completed charging at 90%. Blue, what do you think about that, buddy? Not much. So <laughs> we're gonna go from here to Theodore Roosevelt State Park, or National Park, excuse me. We'll explore Medora, and we might end up camping around there. It's four o'clock already. There's two beautiful roads apparently we can drive around. We're not sure where we're gonna stay tonight, but we'll find a good spot, right, Alyssa? Right. That's your, that's your job. Oh no. Yeah, and I, we won't need charging tonight because we have plenty of juice to make it over to Glendive, Montana. Alyssa's gonna drive so I can continue editing 
<laughs> editing the videos for you guys. Let's head off to Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And yes, Alyssa's driving. We'll need the radar detector. Autopilot picks him up as a pedestrian. We need bison to show up on the screen right here. Ellie likes to just sit in the back and chill. Very rarely do we get to have her up here. What a treat it is for you to come and join us today, Ellie. Ellie really liked looking at the bison. She was very intrigued. She doesn't really bark at anything, but she seemed to really love it, which makes sense because you love everything, don't you? A little coyote that's probably freaking out all the prairie dogs right now. I bet he has a nice meal living in this park every day. Well, I would say that was a pretty awesome time in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Saw a lot of bison, wild horses. They're so cute. They were very cute. This was an awesome, really a great stop. I hadn't been before. Uh, we originally thought maybe we would camp around here, but it's 7.20 p.m. We're feeling pretty good. We only left Minot at 11 a.m. Anyway, so we did just go into a different time zone. So, I mean, it's staying light out a little later as we make our way west. I think we just head to the Glendive Montana Supercharger, um, which, was, which is the next one west, and we'll camp tonight in Montana. So we'll try and find a spot around there. at the Glendive Montana Supercharger. Welcome to Montana. We are here at 9% plugging in to their brand new, are we the first person to use this? Who knows? Brand new version three supercharger on these pretty nifty pedestals. Let's get this thing cooking. This is where the trip starts to get good. We had a great experience at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. 
and it's only going to get better from there. Charging is working. We're ripping along. We're at 10% already, about to hit 100 kilowatt, and then it'll ramp up to 250 from there. Temperatures are coming down. It's mid 70 degrees right now. It almost feels chilly. We've been used to some really high temps. Even in North Dakota, it was mid to high 90s. So this 70 degree weather feels great. Kind of an interesting supercharger because there's not much in town. It's at a hotel, Holiday Inn, I believe. Yep, Holiday Inn, big fan of those. They're always great. Eight stall supercharger, 250 kilowatt. What more could you want though? This is really great. We are gonna figure out our plans because we can't really find a campground that's open. Let's take a look and check in with Alyssa. And we got this thing pegged and maxed out just about 250 kilowatt. Pretty sweet. Let's go let the dogs pee. Cause you guys haven't been out for a hot minute. Let them go pee and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do. Look at this 250 kilowatt. We're not gonna have much time if it charges this fast. In the time that it took to get the dogs to pee and we haven't even used the restroom yet, the car is more than half full. This version three charging thing is pretty sweet. And the newest update, which isn't even on our car, has a way more aggressive charging profile, which means it's only gonna charge faster. Gotta love it. This is definitely the standard of charging. I, I think 200 plus kilowatt is needed for road trips at this point. 150 is just too slow. Sorry to all the bolt owners that only charge at 55 kilowatt. That's not the future of transportation. This for long, long road trips, you need these high power chargers. They're great. We are charged up to 64% and tapered pretty hard. Let's go to Miles City, Montana. Now this supercharger's had a few issues. It's been turned on, turned off, turned on, turned off. Some stalls work, some don't. It's brand new, um, but it says three of eight available and Tesla does real time charging status. So if it's available, it means it will charge fingers crossed um, because Billings is 210 miles. That's a really deep charge we'd have to do. We have more than enough to make it to Miles City. Of course, this is how long it took just to get our stuff done here. We have 34% arrival in Montana. You can do 90, 95 miles an hour up and down the highway. No one cares. Speed limits are 80 plus. So let's just rip it to Miles City and get some miles under us. fantastic campground mel is the man this is basically his backyard and he has a little side business of 10 spots where we can park and charge and this used to be a really key charging spot before the superchargers went in he's like oh yeah the tesla guys stop in all the time to charge and i told him that the supercharger network just went in and he was kind of bummed because he loved seeing the cars and meeting the owners we talked about evs for about 20 minutes just now and uh, it was a really, really cool experience. Great guy. So now we're gonna open up our roof box, which has all of our camping gear and set up camp just behind the car. We're gonna prepare for some big storms tonight. We're gonna have wind, rain, who knows what else. So we're gonna put up the rain fly, stake in the tent, do it all properly because we might have some weather coming our way. And this is the Gazelle T4 Plus. This is just updated for 2020, really sick tent. We're gonna put the tarp down, 
then the tent. We have a blow up air mattress. The car doesn't really need to charge to make it to the supercharger. So what I'm gonna do is plug it into either one of this or that NEMA 1450. I'm gonna set it to start charging at two o'clock in the morning to 90%. Actually, yeah, we'll do 90%. And that way the car can sit at a low state of charge tonight, around 40%, which one is really good for the battery and two will help calibrate the BMS because it's been supercharged a lot. So Alyssa, what do you say we get this tent up and going and just like that a couple minutes later the tent is up it, it's amazing how fast this thing goes up honestly it's more time consuming putting the tarp out than it is raising this thing we are going to put the rain fly over it tonight and then stake it down as we're setting up camp this is the first campground we've come across that doesn't actually have a wall outlet to blow up our air mattress charge our laptops and stuff like that but we are prepared we have a 300 watt pure sine wave which is great for uh, electronics uh, 12 volt to 120 volt converter so we can plug it into the cigarette lighter and it gives us power uh, we have tried it it does blow up our air mattress it can sustain that load and it can charge all of our electronics so we're going to run an extension cord from the car to our uh, our campsite tent and then uh, blow up our air mattress get the lights in there so let's uh, set up camp with our inverter Good morning. Really windy night. We had to strap the tent to the car so it didn't fly away <laughs> and it rained. So it was our first bad weather camping. It was very dry in here. The tent was great. We have, uh, you know, you obviously you can see the water droplets on the roof now. It's sunny. It's about 830 in the morning. Um, but we uh, we originally put the tent up and it started to fly away. So we had to strap it to the roof bars. Uh, and, and other than that, everything was, was really good. Dog slept fine. We slept fine. And now we're going to pack up camp and figure out where we're going to end up today. You can see this all got unstaked and tore up. And those are the straps. Alyssa's taking them off now. We strapped them to the roof box of the car. And are you giving the dogs drinking water from our roof that's contained the water? We have the dog's food ready to go. We have their water. We have some trash, editing materials, and now I need to get our air mattress in there. This is the bag that our tent fits into. It fits in very easily, and you can see it's already starting to collapse down. You just push in each side. This is the Gazelle T4 Plus. It's really a great tent, super, super easy to set up and take down. I have mostly everything out of here except our air mattress and a sweatshirt. So I gotta fold this up, put it in the car, pull down the tent, and then we'll be ready to go. We're gonna swing by the Miles City Montana Supercharger. It does not show in plug share, it's brand new. I think same problem that we saw in, was it Dickinson? Uh, where I think one of the cabinets is completely down, but one is available. But um, we don't necessarily need to charge there to get to Billings, but I'd like to go see it, plug in for a second, and then head off onwards. Well, we'll be here for the next two days. Because we are at high state of charge, we cannot take advantage of the version three speeds. Again, that only happens between zero and 35% where we can charge above 150 kilowatt. So uh, we're gonna not waste much time here, but we do wanna make sure we make it to the Billings supercharger 
with a little bit of buffer. One, because of course we have the roof box that uses a lot of range, but two, we can drive 90 miles an hour the whole way there. So it's faster for us just to put in a little extra juice here. We're also gonna get lunch, not that we're in a huge rush, and then just rip it all the way to Billings and pull in dead empty. So I think we'll do a, let's say 80% charge here, maybe 75, 80%, somewhere around there. And then we'll head out, get some breakfast or lunch at this cool place down the street, and we'll be off. Well, this doesn't look too bad, does it? Oh yeah. haven't made it far it's already a little bit afternoon we only camped about 40 miles this way but we woke up late got on the road charged had a long lunch so we're gonna go from here in Miles City we're charged up to 80% to Billings we are then gonna just make our way west along I-90 and maybe stay somewhere in this general area south side of Glacier and then tomorrow we're gonna make our way up into the park which is just gonna be so cool. charging but we're borderline you want to explain what's going on yes <laughs> we've got very high winds yes very high headwinds massive headwinds in fact so much so that we've had to drop the speed to 62 miles an hour we have it's gonna kill us in itself. yeah 71 miles to get there and it shows a two percent arrival and, but if we continue driving like how we're driving, we're only gonna get 68 miles and it's 71 to get there. So of course you can always extend the range of your electric vehicle by slowing down, but we've slowed down a lot. You were doing 85, 90 miles an hour when we first set off and everything was good. Blue, I guess is having a dream, I don't know. Should we put our hazards on? And uh, no, not, not until we get below like 55. But uh, yeah, we're just gonna have to cruise pretty slowly. Well, that was a painful stretch of headwinds and elevation that we even overcharged at the last charger by like a lot. But uh, we arrived at 2%, nice work keeping it slow, which is unlike you. All right, Blue, please don't go outside. Let's go get this thing supercharging. This is a version two. We are back on the older network. We've seen almost all the new V3s on that new network that we showcased. Plugged in and juicing up here in a second. It's communicating. Will it start charging? <laughs> Come on. Yes, there we go. And this is some interesting restrictions on these signs. You see this? Two hour parking between 12 and eight. So this must be overflow parking for a store. I imagine that store over there. Not really sure why that's the restriction, but that's all right. I'm gonna drive for the rest of the day, finished editing that video as we pulled in the parking lot. So we are back on version two superchargers, which means in the heat like it is now, these temperatures of these handles are gonna get quite warm. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a rag covered in cold water, 
or at least a little bit colder than room tent, but it is soaking wet and I'm soaking the handle in that rag. And what that's going to do is it's gonna keep temperatures down within the handle so that the chargers don't limit the charging speeds because this handle gets too hot. That seems to be the biggest limitation with this system. And this is an easy fix to ensure a longer charging session at high speeds. The other trick you can do is just unplug, move to another open one, and you'll ramp back up to max speeds, but this will at least prolong that from needing to happen. So let's take a look at where we're gonna be heading after this. We're in Billings right now, and then we're gonna be going off to over here, which is where uh, Glacier National Park is. So I think we should just charger hop, charger to charger, it always makes the most sense. Big Timber, Montana is only 64 miles away. We'll charge up to 45, 50% or so. We're doing 142 kilowatts, which is great. Charge there, looks like it's right off the highway and that'll be the fastest way to get to Bozeman, which will be the following charger after that. Plus, Bozeman's a cool town that I've always wanted to check out and I've never been. So maybe we'll explore Bozeman. Welcome to Big Timber, Montana. What a cool little spot. It's like a mile and a half off the highway. It kind of looked like it was on the highway from before. No big deal. Awesome, cool like shops and stuff. We got snacks. You can buy pretty much anything you want in that store. It's pretty cool. Um, I think we're gonna be heading off to Bozeman next. That is the plan. It's only 63 miles away. We're already charged up to 47%. You know, this uh, wet rag on the charging handle that I've been doing, <laughs> keeps this thing charging real fast all the way through. beautiful Bozeman, Montana, one of the coolest spots. We just rolled through downtown. Awesome. They have uh, Montana State University here. If you've seen in our videos, you know Alyssa's studying for her GRE. She needs to go to grad school somewhere for, for physical therapy and they have a good program. So maybe this is on the list. We're going to charge up, drive through campus just to see it because how cool would it be to live out here and uh, do tons of off-roading. You know, this is where we should get a couple Rivians and just go crazy expeditions all over the place. Uh, way more than what we're doing here. This is a taste for hopefully future expeditions with some off-road capable vehicles. We are charged up to about 50%. We're gonna go south, not very far to Big Sky, Montana, which is a ski town. There's also a supercharger there and we're gonna go and get some dinner in Big Sky.
welcome to Big Sky, Montana. What a cool town this is. Huge ski town and they get a ton of snow. And in places that get a lot of snow, I've been starting to see superchargers get installed like this. And I believe I know the reason. If you look at some supercharger installs that are faced this way, normally when the snow plow comes, they push the snow up and they tilt. At least here, they won't get damaged with all the snow getting tilt up, uh, built up here. So I think we're getting pretty tired, at least I am. Didn't really sleep much last night, so we're looking for a campground somewhere in this beautiful place. I mean, can we complain about this? Absolutely not. So cool, great shops here, and um, just a beautiful drive. So we're gonna get this thing charged up way more than we need to because we don't know if we'll be camping with or without electricity. It's a great spot to hang out. We'll let the, let the dogs out. We'll charge it up to probably 80 or 90 percent and then we'll figure it out from there. Alyssa is looking up campgrounds right now. So we don't exactly know the spot that we're going to stay yet but we found a cool town in the mountains called Ennis and Ennis all the other nav systems basically it's on the other side of the mountains wants to route us around but Apple Maps is ballsy and there's like a dirt rocky mountain pass that cuts through the mountains that we're absolutely going to take and so i think if we can get out of here we're at 81 percent. it's only 33 miles if we cut through the mountains so even if we hit a spot that we can't get to or get through we can always turn around and come back here to the supercharger so i see it as very little risk and uh, maybe we'll see some beautiful sights and probably no one else out there so what do you say about that yeah, sounds good, adventure. Here is how the Tesla wants to route us all the way around, and here's how we're gonna go, which is basically just straight through up and over this mountain and into Ennis. We'll see if we can do it. I don't know, but we'll find out. a sip of water and I had just engaged autopilot so I could open the lid and when you engage autopilot and you roll off the accelerator pedal it holds the speed and then when you come off it gives a big burst of acceleration and go back to your set speed and I knew this was gonna happen but I tilted the water bottle forwards but then it really gave it the full beans and it just spilled water all over me I mean I don't know what Tesla is thinking with this accelerator pedal tuning on autopilot but it's really bad and I'm <laughs> I even compensated for it ahead of time and I'm still covered in water and when do you think there's a problem it was very cold too not not the most comfortable anyway let's hope I need my phone back because that's the only nav system that routes us over the mountain fun but we can't go any farther I guess we're heading back to the main highway but man what an amazing section of dirt road this was down the road at the Big Sky Supercharger. I think at the same one we just plugged into. We're gonna top it up to 90%. Alyssa ordered a pizza. Looks like a cat has walked all over our car. <laughs> Alyssa ordered a pizza. We're gonna let the dogs go. It's already at 85%, but while we're here, we'll top it up to 90 and then we'll be off to Butte, Montana, which is way west, where instead of camping tonight, because I have a migraine and I cannot get this video to upload without Wi-Fi for whatever reason, we're having hot spot issues we're gonna stay in a hotel and then we will get back to camping with our regu regularly scheduled campsites so 
off to Butte, Montana, and maybe a little driving around here as well. Well, we got a pizza, a pretty large one. We probably should have thought about space because we don't really have much room in this car. The video is uploading here. Hopefully it's still going. And uh, yeah, we got to fit this pizza box in with us and we're going to eat it on the road heading west to Butte. We are just about to go for a Starbucks run here in the morning in Butte, Montana. We stayed in this days and it was honest review, absolutely horrible, really bad. <laughs> Can never recommend this particular days and normally they're not too bad. This one was awful, just bad air conditioners. The rooms were nasty, not a good, not a good place. However, the spot that we did get, it was the last available was right next to a wall outlet. So of course I charged the car overnight, did about 10 kilowatt hours, which is great. And it just means we'll have to supercharge for a little bit less this morning. So let's jump in, go to Starbucks while Lissa is showering and we'll be off to Glacier. Good Lord, she looks homeless. What the heck is going on here? I think she just got out of the shower and hasn't done her hair yet, but Lord. You all right? I thought you would park a little closer. Well, you're looking a little rough today. <laughs> So here is where things get interesting. We're here in Butte. We're going to charge up just a little bit just to tick another supercharger off. And then we're going to go up to Missoula. And in Missoula, we need to do almost a 100% charge because again, we're going to spend a couple days up here in Glacier and there's no DC charging infrastructure at all. So we need all the juice we can get at Missoula. From Missoula, we're going to drive nice and easy all the way into Glacier, find a campsite, hopefully with power, that would solve all of our problems. But if not, we will be prepared for a dry campsite, as they say. No power, no hookups. And then there is a couple level twos that's kind of in the area, and it'll get pretty interesting, which I always enjoy trying to find charging. So let's uh, get going. We are now plugged in literally a half a block away from the hotel at Butte with beautiful mountain views. Uh, this town honestly isn't that great. I hate to say it, but there's just like sketchy people around you can tell it's a little bit lower quality especially than bozeman but i i sort of expected in the mountains this to be kind of like a mountainy town and it's absolutely not it feels like uh i don't know just a normal highway rest stop town anyway we're gonna charge up here just for a couple minutes head to missoula and that's where we'll do the long charge we may find a dog park along the way because i think it'd be good just to run the dogs because they're not allowed off leash inside of glacier um, away from our campground. So we'll definitely want to get some energy out of them. We won't need long here. Thanks to charging on the 110 overnight on the wall outlet. We'll need probably just five, 10 minutes because again, we can travel quite quick on the highways in Montana. So we'll put a little bit of a buffer in. I need to rearrange the dogs area in the back to give them a little bit more room. Right, buddy? You can always use more room Same with this toy. And, uh, then we'll be off to Missoula. Got yourself a stick, buddy? Yeah, that's nice. Had a little leftover pizza. So that's what's for breakfast today. Cold pizza is great, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Yummy.
Welcome to Missoula, where we are at the best supercharger, or one of them, because that right there is a Starbucks. <laughs> Already went today though, so no need to go back again. We're gonna charge this thing to 100%. We'll be here a long time, because as you know, as batteries fill up on state of charge, as pack voltage increases, you cannot throw as much current, as many amps into the pack so that it has to slow down to protect itself from over voltage. And that is the technical reason as to why they slow down as the pack fills up. I am gonna put a cold rag over that charging handle because we're at 5%. It's gonna dump all the current in there when pack voltage is really low and then back off as it fills. And that's gonna heat up that handle, especially as it's directly in the sunlight. Not that it's too hot though. Anyway, let's uh, be here for a little while. Let the dogs run around. Seems like a beautiful spot really gorgeous and they can run all around through here which will be tons of fun <laughs> we are already at 91 percent we're going to charge it up all the way Alyssa just ran into Starbucks. We met some great Model Y owners that just traded their three, really cool. Blue and Ellie got to see another dog here. We had a great time. And uh, now it feels like the first time we're kind of just waiting on the car once Alyssa gets back. So really not too bad. We'll just hang out for the next 15, 20 minutes or so as this thing fully charges. We are all the way juiced up to 100%. It's 144 miles to our planned charging stop that I think is turned on. I hear they turn them on and off. Other than that, we're going to get creative with charging at campgrounds that sound like they're full. We really don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to go and find out. So 100% charge, it's still just topping off, but we have the AC running maxed out. So it may just complete almost never because we have a load going on the car, a high voltage load running the air conditioning this hard. So I think we're good to unplug and we will head into Glacier National Park. Get ready for this footage because it's about to get really beautiful. Welcome to beautiful Glacier National Park. We decided to, can you get our pass? We decided to purchase a yearly uh, National Park Access Pass for the whole vehicle uh, and for the two of us. So I don't actually know how much it was, but I think probably around $100. It's not, 80. oh, it was 80. It's not bad because it almost pays for itself, actually more than pays for itself with all of the parks that we'll be hitting along this trip. Um, so I think that was smart to do and we have one year from purchase date. So the end of July, 2020, uh, 2021 we'll have coverage for. Yeah, um, so that will work in 
all national parks, and I think like, even some state parks accept it. And you also get discounts on like recreation.gov if you're camping at any of those sites. It'll give you a discount if you have this card. Right, and access to camp freely on BLM or Forest Service land as well. Yeah. Uh, so that's very good to have for sure. Uh, we are on the beautiful Going to the Sun Road here in Glacier National Park, and we're about to see some of the craziest views ever. Uh, we're going to first go up to the charging station on Lake McDonald, which is the only uh, public charging station within like 100 miles of here uh, that's in the U.S. In Canada, there's superchargers right on the other side, but of course the border is closed and we cannot go over there to charge. So uh, we're going to go plug in at the level two, just make sure they work and then we'll figure out what to do from there. And welcome to Lake McDonald. This is our charging point here. They have a Tesla wall connector, 40 amp at business voltage, 208 volt. Although it seems to be pretty good, 211 or so. And then they have a Clipper Creek J1772. I'm not totally sure how to park so I don't block both. I think what I'll do is I might even uh, leave room. I think a J1772 vehicle could park in this space and just run the cord over. It seems to be a pretty long charging cord. So I think we'll be okay right here, but I am going to go ask someone just to double check. So we're charging up here. This is going to be our main charging hub, 40 amp, 204 volts. That's all this thing can do. That's fine though. Should be okay. We'll probably charge it. I don't know, a little bit more than what we're at. We're going to run into the general store over there, get some bear spray, which is badly needed. And the reason we're going to get some bear spray is I think we're going to try and camp tonight in some forestry land. Just you basically drive down any uh, National Forest Service owned land and you can find spots to camp and some of them have fire pits and everything. So uh, we might get a little adventurous and do that, but we might also get some visitors tonight and we need to be prepared with bear spray. Although for the most part, they won't bother us. Um, there's some grizzly bears out here that if they're really hungry, but they should be okay. Um, we're just gonna keep the food locked in the car with the windows up so they don't smell anything and we don't draw them over to camp. All right, so we just went to that nice store over there. It's really cute and everything's actually reasonably priced for being inside of a park. Anyway, so we got Kyle's finally bear spray. We've got two of them for our camping excursion. They're not today. cheap. They're 50 bucks a bottle. But it's a normal price. So they didn't yeah. like up sale spray, up to our or something. It's then, basically just way more aggressive pepper spray. Yeah. And then the other night we ran into a lot of wind and our stakes that actually came with our tent. One bad thing we found, suck. So we got better ones. And then this is dinner tonight. It's a pad thai and it looks really yummy and it's a lot less calories than the one that we ate last time which is a lot better and a lot less sodium as well. And then lastly we got this cute sticker to put on our roof box to start our collection. Nice work. There we go. Glacier on the Yakima Rock. Roof box. Wow, I can't talk. This is the Grand Tour 16 for anyone wondering. Yakima didn't sponsor the trip, but they did send us this for free, and uh, we're going to keep it. It's pretty cool. And guys, it fits so much. Yeah, it has actually quite a bit of room, and it doesn't seem to impact efficiency. We're not saying this just because they gave us the box. They're not going to watch any of these videos. They probably even forgot they sent it. Maybe but yeah, they no, they won't. But it's super, super efficient. It's pretty great. to a town called Pole Bridge, which is pretty deep into the park, up right on the Canadian border, right over here. And apparently it's nice dirt roads and we can find some campsites along the road. So we're gonna be looking out for those, seeing what other people are doing, and maybe we'll find a spot for tonight. Either way, we'll have some beautiful views along the drive.
have gone down this crazy gnarly road. We were scraping the bottom of the car the whole time. We had wheels in the air. I'm not quite sure how we're gonna get back up, but I don't know if we ever need to leave. Look at this beautiful spot that we found to camp in. We're in national forest land. It's open for anyone to go and explore and stay. And um, I'm not quite sure where we're gonna pitch the tent. The car is just behind me over here, but it's kind of like a grassy patch where we could. However, how nice would it be to stay right on this river? Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. It's glacier water, it's deep blue, or I should say bright blue, it's very cool. And uh, Alyssa's going this way to go explore to see maybe if we can find a spot over that way. So the dogs are loving it, we are too. It really doesn't get any better than this. So this is really going to be the first time we've set up camp off grid. We have no hookups, no water, nothing here. It's pretty great. We have uh, our electrical power coming from the car. Our battery percentage is, oh, I don't know if you can see no polarizer on it. Ah, uh, sorry. I can't even see. Let's take a look. It's at 40, 42% state of charge. So that will last us many days, no problem. However, we also need to get back to the supercharger. So we may have to go in a glacier tomorrow. We're technically in Flathead, is it? Yeah. Flathead National Forest, which glacier I believe is right there. We're just outside the park. This is the land that anyone can camp on. It's only a two miles, I believe. And um, so we'll go back into the park and charge up when needed. However, we have our power cord coming out. We're gonna blow up our air mattress. We have our cooking stuff. We just moved over here. Take a look at this. Right over here, we have our cooking stuff. This whole group that's here that heard about this land is just a big family reunion. They were like, yeah, no one's using this space. These are day fly fishers. So we were happy and welcome to be here, which was really great. Uh, let's run around the side. So we're gonna put our air mattress, blow that up in there, nice queen size air mattress. Ellie is absolutely disgusting. She's gonna have to run around in the river and get clean. We have these cool fold up chairs that fold up into nothing. And uh, of course the screen room, which is the dog's room, as well as where I'm gonna get some work done. And how about that for a view? It really just doesn't get better. We have our rain fly on, everything is good to go. We have the power running in, our bed is unfolded and blown up. We'll have to get the sheets on in a second. And um, it's really working out well. I'm gonna start thinking about dinner here. We have plenty of water in the car, so we're gonna try one of these pre-packaged foods. This one is Pad Thai, should feed two people. Looks to be pretty good. I'm gonna like this Repel, because I hate bugs. You know, I've been using these wristbands. They seem to actually work pretty well, I'm impressed. Um, so we'll fire this thing up, gotta get the propane. There it is, we'll get that going and have a nice hearty meal for dinner. Oh, we have a nice little dinner prepared for us tonight. Thank you, Alyssa. Little pad thai, little rice, some spices about to go in. All looking pretty good. Your food review, please. Incredible. It has got all the flavors you possibly need. Gave you some peanut butter packets so you could um, have that peanut buttery taste. And then crystallized lime. So put some lime on there which is very important to me with Thai food. I love lime. So to me this is an 11 out of 10 favorite so far. All right guys we're gonna see how Kyle does going up this track. I'll give you a quick view of what it looks like. It's very steep. It goes up into this hill. So we're gonna see how the Tesla does. one complete. So these are some of the roads that we've been driving on. They're super washboarded out and uh, the trick is just to go really fast over the washboard and that way you don't get stuck. 
stuck in the divots. So the key here is full speed, full rally style. And you can see we have some oncoming traffic this way. But uh, relatively uh, low traveled roads and uh, not very many cars out here. Just a fantastic place to go and rip around. Join us now in the beautiful, cute town of Polebridge, Montana, up in the way northern parts of Montana. Dirt roads only to get here. Pretty cool. Uh, there's a little store here. There's another tons of sick off-roading cars. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful spot. Only about 10 miles away from our campsite. Can't get better than this. Live music, a little bit of food. We already ate, but we're going to explore. You ready for our first night in Glacier? With these stars? Oh my gosh, yes. I'm excited to turn off this lantern, look up at the stars, snuggle with the dogs. It's cold out. Yeah, it is. So we got extra blankets. Sleeping bags. Yeah, Blue has their jacket on. Blue's got his jacket on. He's Ellie's built for cold weather. back at our charging spot where we have been driving around we've done 94 miles since our last charge really good efficiency because the speeds have been relatively low although we have been ripping up some back roads this is our problem there's only level two charging here and we need to charge this thing what Alyssa was thinking was that we'd go rent a boat for four hours mm -hmm. and go cruise around uh, Lake McDonald and then we'll do this beautiful road sort of in the sunset time which I think would be perfect so let's get this thing plugged in without waiting too long it's only 40 amp 200 volt and we'll get it charging Ellie prairie dog does not realize but is hunting oh just went in the hole blue saw it uh oh blue do not chase them you cannot disturb them they're a keystone species all these little holes are those prairie dogs like we saw back a few national parks ago, or last national park. Theodore Roosevelt, we saw a bunch, right? Yeah. We were able to get food, but no boats. It was a nine mile walk to get a boat, which I can't do. <laughs> and uh, no hiking with the dogs, only certain trails, but none were around there. So we hung out, charged up to 38%, took a long time. Hung out down by the, uh, down by the river, it was really nice. Uh, but now we're going to do the going to the sun road and then see how much charge we have left afterwards and then we'll figure out how long we need to wait there to charge. Dang, that's a big glacier. Look at that thing. <laughs> global warming out the wazoo <laughs> yeah well you know i think in the winter time this road is probably pretty crazy
car is doing pretty well. We've gained about 2% on the way down already. And these views are just the best. Anyway, it's totally muddy, covered in bugs. Thankfully, we have paint protection film, so everything should be nice and safe. But yeah, look at that. Using it properly, all of the... <laughs> they're not actually scratches. They're more like dirt marks that just kind of... Where am I? Right here. Or on the surface of the paint. But uh, yeah, I'm sure it's not looking so great even after we clean it. So, but what is looking great is that. Oh man. So this was a great day exploring Glacier National Park. I mean, this is just worth the road trip all right now. The dogs are enjoying the view. I'm very happy they get to see it, even though I'm not quite sure they know what they're looking at. But I hope you guys are enjoying it. <laughs> We're going to go charge this car up, have another great night's sleep at our secret camping spot right on the water, and then we will be heading off into the next episode. So if you want to see more, please subscribe because we have a ton of more series coming with this car driving around the country, camping out of it. And of course, you can always support us through Patreon. We all appreciate that. And uh, many of you have met us at Superchargers along the way. Check out our glimpse. It's in the description. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Say bye, Ellie. Bye. Bye, Blue. Thank you.